Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be an awesome show. Today we're gonna be taking a look at a really cool, by all appearances, one by one record player turntable, sort of all in one system. Now I've seen this around for a period of months and I've got my eye on it and I have had for some time. I really want to see if this thing is worth its salt. So let's check it out. We'll do a full unboxing, review, direct feed, sound test, all that stuff. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Welcome to Recordology. I've been looking forward to reviewing this turntable for quite a while, so I'm glad to get my hands on one. Finally, this is from One by One, and right out of the gate, I'm just gonna say this is a $209 turntable system. It's actually normally $259 in Amazon as of the uh, filming date of this video has it listed for a discounted price of $209. So is it worth it? We shall see, we'll test it out, we'll unbox it, all that good stuff. But I like the fact that it's got built-in speakers. It's got a cool look to it. And based on what we've seen from One by One recently, this could be a very nice turntable. Okay, the big reveal. And we're met with more cardboard, yay. Actually, this is a good thing. You can see it was actually utilized for its intended purpose. This inner piece of cardboard prevents box cutters and knives from damaging the device. So I'm glad that was in there. We've got a quick start guide right here, which is good. Let's take a look inside. Looks like it's laid out in a logical fashion. I like it. And then the unit itself sandwiched in between styrofoam. So let me go ahead and remove this and we'll go from there. So what made this unit sort of stand out to me was a couple of things. One thing is a styling aesthetic seems to be unlike you know anything we've really seen before. I'm gonna go and kind of talk through this as we're looking at some of these accessories. I like the fact they gave you an alignment protractor. There's the counterbalance, cheap 45 adapter, and then the uh, regular user manual in there. The other thing though is the fact that it seems to be a full-blown turntable system and uh, with built-in speakers. So it's sort of an all-in-one in a way. Oops. It's sort of an all-in-one in a way, although you can connect it to a bigger sound system or you can use the built-in speakers. The question is, are the built-in speakers any good? That's the question on all of our minds. Let's go ahead and remove this foam block. This is quite difficult to do behind a camera. <laughs> Not quite as awkward as in front of it. It'd be kind of amusing to see kind of me kind of straining to reach this from behind the camera. Okay, and there we go. Let's go ahead and remove the plastic wrap. And the problem with any studio is that it's never big enough. <laughs> so this studio that we have seemed like such a luxury when we moved down to Florida. And indeed it is. I'm very thankful, very blessed to have a studio. But it instantly became too small. So uh, <laughs> it needs to be bigger. And I have worked in on various projects films and television. I've worked in studios over 10,000 square feet and it's the same principle. They are also always too small. All right, so here's our dust cover. I like the branding emblem there on the front. It's a smoked polycarbonate dust cover. So I will set that aside. It does have rubber stops right there so it'll gently descend onto the plinth. And then we've got the turntable itself. And again, this is sort of all in one. And when I, the reason why I say a sort of all in one is it doesn't have like a CD player or tape player, like a traditional quote unquote all in one, but it has the speakers built in. So it's a turntable because you can connect it to external speakers, but it's also got everything you need to have a self-contained system. But is it is it good enough to be a self-contained system? You know what I mean? Are the speakers good? Are they just gonna be tinny? Are they gonna be thin? Or is it really gonna sound nice? Is it gonna be something that you would really want to use as a self-contained system? Here's the platter. The platter is die cast aluminum. And it's belt driven turntable. There's the belt with the ribbon and the platter mat on top there. I will, no, nah, don't set that on there. I will set that aside and we'll get to that in a minute. But I want first to finish unpackaging the turntable. Since we got this right here, might as well unwrap it. 
Yeah. Die cast aluminum. This feels like a fairly thin die cast. Some of these are made thicker than others, and this one feels a bit thinner. I mean, it feels fine. I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, but uh, that's sort of my impression here. It's got a nice beveled edge. Feels like it's machined nicely. There's a little bit of a divot, and then the platter mat right there with a one-by-one -one branding. Or you can use a plain side, or you can put on your own platter mat. Whatever you so choose. All right, let me kind of get reorganized for another shot. We'll take a closer look at the unit itself. Okay, funny behind the scenes story. Do you see this faint line here? And this is the cutout of the plinth or of the uh, mechanism. Looking at that on camera, I thought that was a hair on my uh, view on my viewfinder here. And I'm sitting there blow trying to blow that hair off. And yeah, it's not a hair. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's spin it around here. This thing looks sharp. I love it. It's got a cool 70s vibe. I love the wood grain. Obviously, this will be a pressed wood material with a veneer over the top of it, but it's nice and smooth. It's not a textured veneer. Um, let's see here. On the front, we've got the speaker grill. Apparently, there's two what they call bass speakers. I'm guessing they're really full range speakers and then two tweeters. So it's a speaker bar, a speaker array of four drivers with the branding down here again a nice beautiful vintage look with the chrome finishings i love it i love it let's go ahead and put it on its end and have a look underneath so at first glance it looks like there's nothing there but there's actually an inset panel where you could open this up uh, to do some maintenance again that will void your warranty but if you don't mind voiding your warranty and you wanted to adjust perhaps the speed or you wanted to get in there and replace something or other you know over the years you could do that the feet are rigid affixed with a thick rubber protruding foot and a chrome trim on the back panel here we've got a 12 volt power supply receptacle built-in preamp this does have a magnetic phono cartridge which is good so there is a built-in preamp so if you want to use the built-in one you set it to line out if you want to use your own external preamp you set it to phono there's an aux input. So yeah, it is, a, it is an all-in-one device. You can hook up external devices there. And then aux out. So that is going to be your auxiliary output if you want to connect it to powered speakers or a big stereo system. And while we're back here, we've got a permanently affixed, interesting way they do this, hinge for the dust cover. And we'll attach that later. Okay, overall weight feels good. It feels like it should. We have a quick start guide as a sticker on here as well. It says long press the start button for three seconds. Indicator light, light turns red. Short press the start button. Again, the same button. Platter starts spinning. So this is, has been put on here because I'm sure they got a lot of calls. Uh, when you have to long press buttons, a lot of people don't realize that or why you have to do that. So it kind of is an odd, odd thing. Let's start with the... Uh, essentially the mechanism itself. This whole piece right here is plastic. Going all the way back here, this base is plastic. This gimbal is plastic. Tone arm is aluminum. This piece back here is aluminum as well. This whole thing is shock mounted. A lot of people don't understand. That's a good thing when it, when it has movement like that because it it isolates vibrations and it avoids unwanted noise coming back through the tone arm. The gimbal has a little bit of play to it, not bad. We've got a rubber lift shelf. The head shell is plastic. It's permanently affixed but made to look like it's removable. We'll look at that closer detail. Let's look at the main bearing. I've seen this bearing before. So it's free spinning but it's not the kind that just goes and goes and goes. Motors over here, interesting choice. I've never seen this exact mechanism, by the way. I'm guessing without knowing that this is possibly made by LeeTac. LeeTac is also the company that makes the Insignia turntable and they make the Target Heyday turntable as well. And they do good stuff. They do entry level stuff, but they do good stuff. Obviously this is an entry level product, but it's, it's cool. Interesting choice to put the motor up here. So we got the brass pulley on the motor. Ideally, these are located opposite from the cartridge. So obviously your cartridge is gonna be down lower right and your motor's gonna be upper left just to isolate the two as much as possible. 
and uh, it will connect to the platter via a belt, obviously, and uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a, in a little bit closer detail. So yeah, that's that. Let's take a closer look of the gimbal and the head shell as well as the controls. Before I show you the gimbal, I think it came with a scratch. I don't think that I did that. I think that that was out of the box. Not a huge deal, but ideally that would have been caught in QC. So again, this is metal, this is plastic, this is metal. I'm sure this is attached to this. We're gonna go put the counterbalance on. You can see this is sort of a machined aluminum with a free spinning plastic disc. We'll put it on there and we'll actually float it versus using the scale. We'll actually float it and see how that gimbal works. I uh, got a little clip here and a tone arm lift right there. This feel overall, this feels a bit cheap, honestly. This does not feel like the most rugged thing I've ever seen, but at the same time, it looks proper and functional. So we'll give it a fair chance. Looking at the head shell, again, it's a plastic head shell permanently affixed to the tone arm there. Although the good news is, is they've provided an Audio-Technica cartridge and that is replaceable. So we could go in there and upgrade the cartridge, but I'm telling you right now, there's just no reason to do it on this kind of a turntable and this level of equipment. There's Don't go put a $500 cartridge on here. There's just no benefit to that. You wouldn't realize the benefit on something like this perhaps with the line output, but certainly not on the speakers, even if they are good. So you can see it's mounted and hopefully aligned properly. It's got insulated uh, cables plugged into the back and that should do just fine. That's a great cartridge, the Audio-Technica 3600L. No problem with that whatsoever. Now looking at these controls, I'm gonna turn it like this so you can see a little better. Uh, we talked about this plastic, plastic, plastic. There's this little metal inset piece. I think that's like a metal adhesive piece there. Pretty lightweight. They've got a good snap. Not much drag. There's no drag on this, so that feels kind of chintzy. Yeah, okay. So that's a look at it. I mean, it is what it is. It's not designed to be a high-end unit, but it is designed to be a quality entry-level turntable. And in saying entry-level, there's nothing negative about that. It just means it's affordable. And whether or not it's a good entry level unit all depends on its performance. So there's nothing I've seen so far that would tell me that this thing isn't going to perform well. It should. The design is, is good. The build and materials are adequate. You don't need to have necessarily metal everything and super high end parts. They're better and they're more durable if you do, but they're not a requirement. So this thing could perform well. You know, having plastic means it won't last as long necessarily. And there's more, you know, risk with, with plastic than there is with metal. But at the same time, having uh, these plastic elements, keeping the cost down on something is acceptable. Assuming that they're keeping things like the platter, you know, the right material, aluminum, the tone arm, aluminum, having a good head shell on there. I would rather have some plastic on the superficial stuff and get a magnetic cartridge versus having, you know, super high quality tone arm and then you have a, a ceramic on there. So I'll take, I'll take this uh, compromise any day. But what does it sound like? That's the biggest thing, right? Does it sound good? What are the speakers like? Do they sound like good speakers? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and balance the tone arm, get it plugged in, put the dust cover on, and we're gonna give it a listen. This is definitely not a precision gimbal. It was very difficult to find the float point. It just it just feels cheap. It's very similar to the Marley turntable in terms of what it feels like when you're trying to balance it. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure we're in the right range here with an actual scale. That doesn't mean it's going to damage your records. It doesn't mean it's not going to work. It's just not a precision gimbal. So it'll, it'll be functional. It's just not going to give you that, you know, complete precision that you would need to do a, a balance the way I was trying to. So we're at two and a half grams. This is a 3600, this track's a bit heavier, so we're gonna put closer to, let's see. And let's back it down, let's do like 
somewhere in that neighborhood. 3.2. I'll take 3.2. So yeah, this this cartridge is designed to track it, which is another reason why I like using this cartridge with the fan steel three mil stylus for playing 78s, because it does track a bit heavier, and that can be a good thing when you're playing 78s on a turntable that can do it, like my PLX 500. Obviously, this can't. This is only two speeds, but that um, rugged Audio Technica 3600 cartridge is well suited. So, by the way, I do want to mention this. Um, you get this Chi 45 adapter. They don't provide a place to put this, so I would recommend upgrading this. Have you ordered your official Recordology 45 adapter yet? Check out the link in the video description below. All right, and there it is all put together. I think it looks very handsome. I like the vintage look. It's got kind of a late 70s, early 80s vibe. Go ahead and lift this up. Yeah, that's cool. Definitely looks sharp to me. I think it's got a very, very good look to it. The question obviously is, does it sound as good as it looks? And for that, we've got to turn the thing on. What's really weird about this is the box says wireless playback, which I interpret to mean as Bluetooth streaming, where this would send Bluetooth out to like a higher end Bluetooth speaker or a Bluetooth enabled stereo system. But based on the instructions and the functionality, I think this is a Bluetooth receiver. So it acts as a Bluetooth speaker for like connecting your phone or your uh, tablet or what. Do people still use tablets? Connecting your device to this to play your music back on this, but not streaming the vinyl out, which is fine. And it does su support Bluetooth 5.0, which is a good codec, but just be advised that this does not transmit Bluetooth, which is fine. Bluetooth is not fun to demonstrate on YouTube. So I'm gonna skip that altogether instead focus on performance. And the first element of performance I want to focus on is platter wobble or hopefully lack thereof. So let's go ahead and spin it up, see what we got. So I'm going to start by flipping this to 33 and I guess we can leave the volume down right now. That doesn't matter. I'm gonna press and hold three seconds and press again. Now it's just spinning. Now I wonder what happens if I press that once? Does that now become a, no, it just turns it off. Okay. And if I press it one more time, okay, so that's a start and stop switch. It's not based on the position of the tone arm. Let's look at the platter wobble and see if there isn't. It does have some, it's not terrible, but it does have a little bit. That's okay. I think that that's passable. It was a bit noisy too. That motor had a little bit of noise to it. Like it needed a little bit of grease. It sounded kind of like a dry axle. Um, let's go ahead and put this on as well. We're going to test the speed consistency. This obviously is way more important than, you know, anything else when it comes to getting the right pitch out of your system, you got to have the right speed. And looking right here, the lines are marching a little bit to the left, which indicates that it's a hair fast, but that's pretty dang acceptable. And I'm okay with it. a little bit of cogging there. See how it kind of goes and lurches but I don't think that that will present itself as audible wow and flutter at that level. So I think that that's acceptable. Let's switch, uh, switch to 45 and look right here now. It'll probably be about the same. Yep, so a tad bit fast. The cogging intervals are a little bit quicker because of the speed, but overall, I think we have a reasonable, reasonable speed consistency, which is a good thing. And for a test record today, something different, how about we use a thousand dollar record? <laughs> That's right, big green cherries, signed and very low count production run of their No One Cares album on a beautiful emerald marbled green pressing. Did not realize when they first sent that to me that it was indeed a thousand dollar record, but it comes with some interesting perks. It comes with some very interesting perks. Let's go ahead and spin this up. And I just wanna listen on the speakers to begin with. We'll do a direct feed sound test as well. But let's check out the sound system. The wattage, I think they said was 15 watts for the bass speakers and 10 for the treble. So I'm guessing that's cumulative. So overall wattage should be in a good range for a product like this. It should sound rich and full and crisp. Let's go ahead and find out by dropping the needle. Let me switch it down to 33. That would help. And here we go. First thoughts, 
thoughts? It's pretty full. It's a little boxy, but it sounds pretty full. It sounds pretty dang good. Out in a place. It's punchy too. It's very punchy. By the way, the audio uh, of me talking may sound weird because I'm not using the vocal mic. I'm just using the front facing stereo mics. So you can get an idea of how this sounds in the room. And again, we'll do a direct feed in a minute, but it's plenty loud, plenty loud at about 40% on the volume. Very interesting. I think the speakers sound really good. I think they sound really, really good. Surprisingly so. So I'm guessing this is an auto stop. So let's, wow, that was not good. Okay, maybe a little more tracking. <laughs> maybe 3. Point, what is it? 3.25, I have this set as a little light. So maybe we, uh, let's see there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's just, it's full auto, so it's not gonna stop or anything. That is a uh, function of a gimbal too, like how eloquently it can handle the run out groove. And as you can see, it skipped around a little bit. I was trying to track this a little bit lighter than it normally tracks at like 3.25. Although that should be within range for the 3600, so I'm surprised it acted like that. Um, that being said, we added a little more tracking force and it seemed to, to do just fine. Okay, so the speakers sounded good. They were very punchy. There was plenty of high end. There was a reasonable amount of bass. Obviously, this is one record, so I need to listen to more music on this. But I was impressed. I think that this might work for like your system in your living room or perhaps a bedroom where you don't want to mess around with a bunch of extra speakers and you want something with decent speakers. This is cool. This is actually, and I still love the design, the, like the visual look of it all. I think it looks really, really sharp. All right, let's go ahead and do a direct feed sound test and I'll let you know my final thoughts. All right, final thoughts. Build quality is probably the weakest link on this. There was a lot of plastic. That being said, all of the parts that mattered most were made well, like the platter, etc., the tone arm. I like the fact that you could upgrade the cartridge if you wanted to. I like that you can set the tracking appropriately, which kind of comes hand in hand with you know, replacing that cartridge, you need to be able to adjust that. There was no anti-skate. The sound was great. That was the most important thing. The speakers were fantastic. 209, I think is what I said, between 29 and 250, depending on if it's on sale at 259. I think that's a little high. I think this would, I would have liked to see this more in the 150 to 170 range. That being said, costs of all turntables are just going up and have been up for some time. So, it kind of is uh, kind of a thing of the times we're living in. And if you wanted a system as a bedroom unit, a secondary system, uh, something for a beginner, something for somebody who didn't want to invest in speakers and all that stuff, this is a viable option. And like I said, the most important part, the sound was good. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. 
let me know down in the comments below. I'll go ahead and put a link to the product if you're interested. But most importantly, just thank you for being there. Congratulations to our winners in the live show the other night. Uh, they won the CD players from Klim. And speaking of Klim, we've got more CD players with some new functionality coming in the next few weeks. But before that, I've got another record player review coming up next weekend that you're not going to want to miss. And a little surprise midweek. But my friends, that's going to do it for today. So happy record hunting and we'll see you next time.